Amen. It's good to see y'all here this morning. We've got a good number. It's good to be seen. Thank you. Amen. Mark chapter number 3, verse number 27. Praise the Lord. Somebody thought we didn't have enough music. <coughs> Hallelujah. I'm glad to be in church this morning. I'm glad to feel the presence of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. I feel like I'm about to melt down and run out of here, and it's just 70 degrees in here. Y'all all look comfortable. Amen. I had to. I had to, I'm glad my wife ain't in here, because I had to sneak over and get me a dish towel this morning, I forgot my handkerchief, so, I, I got, it was brand new, I hope, yeah, it was, I'll put it back in the drawer when I get done, don't worry, <laughs> Praise the Lord. There's been a number of folks, there were several more supposed to be here this morning, and I don't know what happened to them, but uh, uh, there's a lot of folks that have been talking about coming to church, and we need to pray that they'll just quit talking about it and get her done. Amen? Amen. They'll do it. Mark 3 and 27. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he will first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. When Jesus was alive and walking, he's still alive, amen? amen? But when he was alive and living on earth, he was always into it with the religious folks, right? He was always into it with the religious elite of the day. Now, the problem was, is that those church folks thought that they were the only church folks, right? And if there was anything wrong with you in your life, you couldn't go to church. They had it messed up, that you had to be perfect and then come to church. Oh, it wouldn't. Thank you. Imagine that. Okay. He was always into it with church folks because Jesus went around... If they had leprosy, he healed them. He sat down with sinners. He, he hung out with people that were not considered the elite, not considered eligible. Jesus went out to needy folks. Sometimes they were rich, Brother Pete. Sometimes they were poor. Sometimes they just average folks. Sometimes they were uh, Gentiles. Sometimes they were Jews. He just went to everybody. People with bad reputations, Jesus went to them. People that had bad diseases that was contagious, Jesus went to them. Jesus would stop what he was doing with his friends to help out somebody that was in need. I'm telling you, I'm ready to be a part of a church that operates the same way. Amen? I'm ready to be a part of a church that operates the same way Jesus did. The scribes, they were considered the biblical authority of the day. The scribes were the ones that got to write down the Bible. It wasn't just everybody could do that, Brother Doyle, but the scribes were able to write down the Bible. And they spent a lot of their time dreaming up reasons why Jesus was able to do what he was able to do. Right? There had to be some kind of crazy reason for it because Brother David, he couldn't be who he said he was because they were expecting the Messiah to come back and be, you know, six foot six and have great big muscles that kind of looked like me. No. They were expecting the Messiah to be this great warrior, this great hero, this man that was going to come deliver them from Roman rule, and they didn't understand that the Messiah wasn't coming to deliver them from Roman rule, Brother David. He was coming to deliver them from sin. So they spent all kinds of time dreaming up reasons for Jesus' abilities, 
And every time they came up with a reason, they tried to discredit him at every turn. It doesn't make sense to me. But a whole lot of stuff going on in the world now doesn't make sense. I'm preaching a gospel that will change people's lives. I'm preaching something that will help people not only at their job and help them in school, but will help them at home. It will help them and ultimately it's going to help them meet Jesus and not be afraid but be confident as they stand before him. That's the gospel that I preach. Jesus healed, he delivered, he walked on the water, he fed 5,000, he fed 4,000 with two sack lunches. Uh, there wasn't anything that the Lord didn't do to try to help people. And every time he healed somebody, somebody tried to discredit him. Somebody tried to come against him. This one that they came up with this particular time takes the cake. They came and accused Jesus of being under the influence of Satan. They said that he was casting out devils by the prince of devils or Beelzebub, which is to be identified with Satan. They, they, I can see him sitting around dreaming up. Now, what can we say now? What can we say? Oh, I've got it. We'll say he's of the devil. Jesus is of the devil. Beelzebub, it means Lord of the dwelling or Lord of the house. Jesus calls them to him. I want you to remember what Beelzebub means. Lord of the dwelling or Lord of the house. Jesus calls them to him and asks them an obvious question. How is it that everywhere I go I'm casting out devils? People are under demonic influence and I walk up and when I speak to them they're free. They're no longer under the influence of Satan. How is it that I'm casting out Satan by Satan? And then he makes a strong declaration that would fit any movement or any organization or any church for that matter. He declares any kingdom that is divided will not stand. Then he goes further and says any house that is divided cannot stand. And if Satan rises up against himself being divided, he can't stand either. If we're going to have revival, saints, it's going to be because we're together. What did Ben Franklin say? If we don't hang together, it is assured we'll all hang separately. Okay, we've got to stay together. If we're going to accomplish anything, it's going to be through unity. It's going to be through togetherness. And every time that a unity is accomplished, every time perfect unity is brought in, and I know this is a cuss word in church circles, but every time that there's unity, there also has to be some compromise. You're not going to have perfect unity and have everything your way. Can I get a witness? If you're going to have perfect unity, there's going to have to be some giving. My dad upset me terribly bad right after I got married. Hurt my feelings. Because everybody knows when you go to daddy with a problem, he's got to see things your way, right? I had just got married. And I wanted my wife to stay home, have supper ready. She's all right. Have supper ready. And I want to go play with my buddies, play basketball with my buddies. And I wanted to do what I wanted to do, but then I wanted her to do what I wanted to do. So I went to tell daddy it wasn't working out quite like I wanted it to. So I went and talked to my dad about it. He said, son, you're not going to have a successful marriage until you learn to give. Well, that wasn't what I wanted to hear, Brother David. I wanted him to tell me how a way to make it work the way I wanted it to work. Guess what? I didn't have a good marriage until I learned to give. We won't have a good church, a God-like church, until we learn to give of ourselves a little bit. You can't be stubborn and be unified. Okay? We got to learn to give a little bit. We got to learn to, to, to be willing to deal just a little bit. It won't work in heaven and it won't work in hell. Disunity is the greatest enemy to revival. Then the Lord says, No man. Everybody say that. No man. When this is stated in Scripture, it means there are no exceptions. No man 
can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man, then he will spoil his house. That word spoil means to seize or snatch away. So when there's a strong man and you want to go into his dwelling place and steal something from him, to snatch something from him, to seize something from him, you've got to first bind him. Because if he's loosed, you have no hope of getting what you're after. You've got to get rid of the strong man, debilitate the strong man in order to spoil, sneeze, or snatch, seize, sneeze, seize, or snatch away his goods. Jesus is simply declaring his mission. Okay? He's, when he said, you can't go into a strong man's house except you first bind the strong man. Jesus is declaring his mission. Basically, Satan has one mission. It has three facets, one mission. What is it? To kill, steal, and destroy. That's all he comes for. To kill, steal, and destroy. This is different, polar opposite from Jesus' agenda or mission. Jesus' agenda is to give life and to give it more abundantly. It is a desire of the Lord that we be happy in this life we're living. It is the desire of the Lord that we have joy in this life that we're living. It is not the desire of the Lord that we be down in the mully grubs all the time with our lip poked out. It's not the desire of the Lord that we be feuding all the time. It's not the desire of the Lord that we be broke all the time. I didn't get too many amens on that, but that's true too. If you follow the biblical financial plan, you won't be broke. It's true, Brother Dole. Brother David, the Lord has laid out everything for us to have an abundant life. Of course, when you start drawing closer to the Lord, you'll find you don't need as much money. Jesus wants to take away death and give life. To take hopelessness and give hope. He came to snatch away what the devil thought he had. The devil thought he had control over God's prized creation. The thing that the Lord was most proud over. There's nothing else in the Bible that is declared continually to be God's workmanship. We were made with his hands, Brother Doyle. We are his workmanship. The only thing created in his image and likeness. And the devil had authority over us. Mankind is God's prized creation. You might love your little puppy, but that's not God's prized creation. You might like looking at the beautiful trees and the, and the beautiful brooks and the rivers and, and the big deer and everything. You might, you might like looking at that stuff, but that's not God's prized creation. You are. You are God's prized creation. The only power, now please try to stay with me this morning. The only power that the devil has to use on us, does anybody know what it is? Sin. Sin is the only power the devil has to use on us. Sin is the separator. It's what separated Adam and Eve from the presence of the Lord in the garden. Amen? The devil has no authority over you by himself. He has to use sin to divide us, to separate us from the Lord, and sin to separate us from the plans the Lord has for us. His is, is the simple existence of the devil or Satan alone is not enough to defeat any one person that is alive today. He can only operate, the devil can only operate through three avenues. Right? Y'all believe me? And they are lust of the flesh, 
the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. That's the only ways the devil can operate in your life is the lust of the flesh, which is what the flesh wants, what feels good to the flesh. The lust of the eye is what I see that my mind tells me I want. And the pride of life, uh, which is trying to please or, or trying to fit in or try to exceed my neighbor. Those are the three ways the devil operates on us. Jesus, when they came to him and said, you're just working for the devil, how ironically is that when he states his claim, he defies their accusation. They said, you're operating under the authority of Beelzebub, which means what? Lord of the dwelling, Lord of the house. Jesus is defying both their accusation and the false reality with which the devil was living. What's the devil thinking until Jesus shows up? As far as the world is concerned. What do you think, brother? He won. What's going on in the world? I read something the other day. I wish I would have copied it off. One of these days when I learn how to run my phone like it's meant to be run, I'm going to learn how to do that stuff. Okay. I read something the other day that listed the things that were going wrong in Jesus' time. They're the same things going wrong today. The same kind of lifestyles, the same kind of government. Uh, everything we're battling with today, they were battling with in Jesus' time. Immorality, uh, folks wouldn't work. Um, what's anything you can think of? Drugs and alcohol use was rampant. Everything, everything. History tells us that the same life that we're battling with today, the early church had to battle with. Beelzebub means Lord of the house or Lord of the dwelling. Jesus came to earth, which was what? It was his creation, but when Adam and Eve sinned, Brother David, sin was introduced into the world, and what does the Bible say happened when sin came in? Death came upon everybody, because of sin. So, Brother Doa, then the earth became the dominion of Satan. And the more people sin, the more powerful he becomes. How many of you know the devil can't make you do nothing? Flip Wilson had it all wrong. He made a lot of money off of it, but he was wrong. The devil didn't make him do nothing. Okay, the devil can't make you do anything, but he uses your own desires perverts your desires to do his work for him. So the more sinning we do, the more powerful the devil becomes. So Jesus came to earth, which was a stronghold of Satan, which he acquired through deceitful means, because remember the Bible calls him the God of the world, the prince of darkness, the prince of the power of the air, right? Okay? And with the subsequent sin that became rampant, it wasn't long after Eve disobeyed in the garden that Cain killed his brother because he was jealous. So now we've got disobedience, we've got uh, uh, disobedience to God, we've got jealousy, and we've got murder all right here in the first family. Imagine what's happened in the world by the time Jesus shows up. Sin has become rampant. And as sin becomes more prevalent in society, Satan becomes more powerful because it is in sinful acts is the only place he can wield his power. Now, he was defeated in a... Oh, God have mercy. I'm trying my best to just stay dignified and everything, but it ain't working. He already lost in heaven, Brother David. Revelation chapter 12 says, and there was war in heaven. And Michael, who is the archangel, and his angels cast out the devil and his angels. They defeated him. In one place, the Lord said, with his finger, he flicked them out of heaven. In another place, he said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. 
He was defeated in the heavenly conflict and was cast out of heaven, of the presence of the Lord, of the most perfect place that anybody could ever dream of and cast into earth and hell. When Jesus Christ was born, his power over mankind began to dwindle. Herod, under the influence of Satan, let's think about this a minute. What did Herod try to do to the Lord? What did Herod try to do to baby Jesus? He tried to kill him. Why did he try to kill him? Because the wise men came and said, we're searching for this king that was born. What was Herod what caused Herod to want to kill Jesus? The lust of the flesh, which is jealousy, and the pride of life, which says nobody's taking over for me. And I'll kill him to make sure it don't happen. Huh? It's the only way the devil can work. Come on, y'all stay with me now. The only way the devil can work is through us sinning. If we don't sin, how does he manifest his power? I'll tell you what he does. Come on, y'all should know what the scripture says he does. He goeth about as a roaring lion. He just sits back and squalls. Huh? Searching around for somebody that will give in to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. It ain't hard to live for God. It's not hard to live for God. It's not hard to do what's right. It's not hard. It's not difficult. So we see right at the beginning of Jesus' birth, the devil begins to work to have him killed. And he works through somebody that's all messed up in their head. Okay. Then Jesus, as he, as he stepped out to begin his earthly ministry, he had a short time of popularity. Actually, if I'm late, don't think I lied to you the other day. She asked me what time we got out of church. I said, 11.30, 11.35. I was telling you the truth most days. <laughs> Jesus had a short time when he was popular, right? About a year of his three and a half years he was popular. And then the rest of his time he faced opposition. He battled the rest of his short life. Jesus only lived to be 33 and one half years old. He battled the rest of his short life to finish the race. He battled all the time to make it up Calvary. They tried to kill him many times, Brother Rice, before they actually did it. They tried to stone him. They tried to kill him. The Bible says one place they tried to kill him when he said, Before Abraham was, I am. Then they tried to kill him. Lies, rebellion, blasphemy. They were all used to try to deter him, but it didn't work. Jesus conquered the world. Amen? Amen. What did he say? In the world you'll have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. He made a way. Sin couldn't touch him. The devil couldn't touch him. Think about this. When Jesus showed up where the devil was, what happened? And that's not the first thing. What happened now? The devil recognized him, came running to him, and said, I know who you are, the Holy One of Israel. He said, you've come to torment me. Before the time. He knows he's doomed for burning in hell for eternity. But how is it that Jesus Christ tormented the devil? He had no authority over him. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. We can't say that they didn't affect him. Okay? Because the Bible says he was tempted in all points. Like as us. Right? Right? The devil tried because Jesus was in the flesh, right? He could see, and he had the, the pride of, of, of self-worth, which everybody should have, right? Okay. Jesus conquered the world. He made a way. Sin couldn't touch him. He was without sin. He came to earth which was the strong man's house. He came to earth in order to bind the strong man. Now get this. He didn't come to earth to bind the strong man for him. 
He came to earth to bind the strong man for us. We needed help triumphing over sin. He came to earth, the strong man's house, to bind the strong man so that we might have hope. The devil does have authority and power, just not power over the Lord. And when Jesus came, he came to bind him. Sin brought desperation. Sin brought hopelessness. Jesus brought salvation. There's a way out. I said there's a way out. The birth of Jesus was the beginning of the end for Satan's dominion over man. When Jesus walked on earth, he exhibited authority over the devil. He showed his authority over the powers of hell. Resurrection morning, no longer did he just show his power, but he had come and... Jesus had come and defeated the devil in his own backyard. The resurrection symbolized the binding of the strong man. Once Jesus, he conquered life. Right? He lived through every kind of temptation known to man, Brother Billy, and never sinned. He conquered life. And then he died on the cross, was buried in a grave, but rose again, conquering life, death, and the grave. And when he came out of the grave, he had proven that a man could defeat the devil. And with the shedding of his blood and the sacrifice that he made and faith in the power of God, you and I can have that same ability to overcome the powers of hell, to overcome the powers of sin, the strong man has been bound. Those who once had no hope are now filled with hope. Faith has risen where once doubt reigned, all because Jesus came to earth, lived, died, was buried, and rose again. I know we've said this as a cliche. I know we've said it in other ways, but i got to let you know that the battle has already been won. The victory has already been won. Jesus came to the devil's house and bound him so that we might be able to come to Jesus. Because what's it say? It says he'll come, bind the strong man, and spoil his goods. Which means what? To seize or snatch back. It was never the will of God that the devil have authority over you or me. But we had no way, we had no opportunity to get out until Jesus came, lived, died, was buried, and rose again. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and you're not your own. I love it. The Spirit of God is within me. So no longer does my body glorify the devil. How does my body glorify the devil in the first place? Through sin. Come on now. There's a prevailing line of thought. My body glorifies God, I mean the devil, through sin. But Jesus has taken up residence in me, and if I've submitted myself to him, hear me right now, I don't belong to me. I don't belong to the devil. But now I belong to Jesus because he paid a price for me. He, didn't, he who knew no sin became sin. He took on the likeness of sinful flesh, Brother Pete, so that I might live. Thank God there's a plan. I too can die, which is the death of repentance, dying out to the desires of the flesh and pursuing a relationship with God. I too can be buried, Romans 6 and 4 says, therefore, we are buried with him 
by baptism into death. Colossians 2 and 12 says, we are buried with him in baptism. I too can be resurrected because the last part of Romans 6 and 4 says that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Once I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, no longer does sin have control over me. In Colossians 2 and 12, the last part says, Wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. Okay. Do we, have we established that we can be like him in the likeness of his death, burial, and resurrection. Here's the problem. And I'm fixing to close. Here's the problem. People want help. People want the benefits of the Lord. Amen. People want the benefits of having Jesus Christ in your life. Huh? If we don't believe, Jimmy can testify to that. We down there at the funeral home, everybody that's ever died in the history of the world was going to heaven. Huh? Me and Matthew was at a funeral one time. I can't even remember whose it was for a fact, for which to thank the Lord. But they weren't a church type person. And the preacher got up there called them brother so-and-so the whole funeral. They never went to their church. Preached them right through the pearly gates because they, they ain't none of them ever, been, ever had no trouble once they're dead, right? He preached him, I mean, right on through the pearly gates. Now, I'm nobody's judge, right? Right? But we do know a tree by the fruit it bears. When we left out of there, Matthew said, let me tell you something. When I die, I want that cat preaching my funeral. Because <laughs> if he can get him into heaven, I ain't got no problem. <laughs> but when people die, the preacher will try every way through preaching to help that poor dead person make it into heaven, no matter who it is. Right. So everybody wants Jesus involved in your life even when there ain't no life anymore right you let somebody's little baby be get down about to die they'll call every kind of preacher that they know getting them to pray you let somebody get something wrong in their life we've seen it here husband will leave them the whole family will show up for church won't help right when we've got all hell breaking loose in our lives we want the lord involved because we have no hope, Brother Pete. We have no, no, no chance. We got to trust in somebody. Everybody wants Jesus in their life. But here's the problem. I hope, I, I hope this illustration makes sense. What many times, not every time, but most times, those folks are wanting is they're wanting the power of God to sneak into their life. Through a minefield of sin and disobedience, they want the help of the Lord without binding the strong man. They want the Lord to reach down and help them and make something beautiful out of their life while they hold on to all of the things the flesh wants, the eye wants, and the pride of life. Honey, when you come to God, you stand up here and you lift up your hands and you say, Lord, I don't have much, but I'm giving you everything. Brother Pete, when I come to the Lord, it's because I can't do it by myself. It's because everything I've touched, I've messed up. Huh? So I'm saying, I need some help. Right? I'm saying I need somebody to come in. The power of sin is strong. I know it is. The, the battles that we see people fight with addiction, 
the battles we see people fight with weakness. See people cry and weep and, and you know, with their, with their having all kinds of physical problems because of weakness. They won't help. But they try to, they want the Lord to be able to coexist with the devil and it ain't happening. So I really, I like to help people and I get phone calls all the time and text messages all the time and Facebook messages all the time. Pray for me, help me, we need help, we need prayer. And there's only one answer I can give, repent. Repent. Yes, the Lord helps people that aren't right with him. Yes, the Lord touches people that aren't right with him. But somebody that knows to do better, that knows to do right, you cannot ask the Lord to coexist with the strong man. Jesus did everything he could do. He bound the strong man. Sin has no more dominion over us. However, we can't allow the devil to reign over us, and the only way he does it, how does the devil reign over us? Through sin. Through us allowing him to. It's hopeless to ask God to share. Can I get a witness? Come on, help me now just for a few minutes. Just for a few minutes. I'm trying my best to get us done by 1130. So I don't have to ask the Lord to forgive me. Matthew 6 and 24 says, here's that first, the same words we started off with our text. No man, you got it up there? No man. What does that mean? Nobody can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. And here's the two masters. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now, for those of us that get a little bit uptight about money, that's actually what that means. That word mammon in the actual translation means riches, which would be things of the world, the things that we have, the things that we want, the things that we put our trust in. Many think they can hold on to the world and to sin, and God will still bless them can't happen. Marcus told me, and he's not alone, I've prayed this prayer. He told me that he's been praying for the Lord to make Matt and Joe so miserable that they can't sleep at night, that they can't find no peace, no happiness in nothing that they do in order for them to come to God. The truth of the matter is, they've been living that way for years. It's just like Jesus just like Jesus, he healed, he delivered, he helped people. He was the answer. He said, I am the way. And they came and said, you're serving Beelzebub, which means Lord of the house. All he was trying to tell him, Brother Kendall, is he used to be the Lord of the house. But there's a new king. And now it's my responsibility to decide who I'm going to let be the Lord of this house. I get to decide who's going to be the boss of me. And it will either be God or me and the devil. It won't be me and God. Because when I submit to him, it's his will. Say, well, I don't know about what all y'all preach and all of that. I won't preach nothing to you. I can't back up with the word of God. I'll back it up with the Bible. And sometimes it's not doing wrong. And now him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. And that's a whole other can of worms I'm not going to open up. You cannot serve God and the things of man. That word master simply means the one who's in control. The power of the strong man must be bound. 
and it will be bound in your life the only way it's ever been bound, which is through the death, which is repentance. The burial, which is in baptism in the name of Jesus. Remember, we're buried with him. And the resurrection, which is the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Dying out to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. What do they get us? Kill, steal, and destroy. How many people do you think you know that... that Budweiser, Bud Light, and Wild Turkey, and Old Charter has stole their family from them. Huh? How many people that you know of that dope and pills and stuff has stole their family from them? How many people you know of that have done things wrong in their life that has stole their relationships from them? Stole their reputation from them. Stole happiness and stole joy. Because strong as you might think you are, we all serve something. There's no staying neutral in this fight of life. You'll serve something. And chances are, if you're thinking, I'd really like to live for God but I don't know about this. Chances are you need to get rid of it. If it's the first thing that flashes in your mind as the reason why I can't live for God, chances are that's why you can't live for God. Let's stand. I'm done. Jesus bound the strong man. We got to turn toward Jesus. He's the only one that's defeated the devil. Conquered death, the grave, and conquered life. The only thing that will make you turn toward him is a revelation of who Jesus is. Jesus is God manifest in the flesh. To get in the church, to get in God's church, how do you get into God's church, you ask? You get born into it. Born of water, and of spirit. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church. That's the church I want to belong to. My church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth, bind on earth. Brother Kendall, the Bible said he's able to keep that which I have committed unto him. Whatever that my mind decides that I want to get rid of, he'll help me. Whatever I, I realize the Lord shows me is stopping me from having that abundant life, if I die, he'll get rid of it. How'd he get rid of it? By the blood he shed on Mount Calvary. How is the blood applied to my life? When I'm baptized in the name of Jesus. Keys are given. They're used to bind some things and loosen others. The strong man has been bound. Sin has no dominion over a child of God. We have got to, that is the first key to anybody being successful in living for God is die. Whoever finds his life is the one that lost it. Huh? Lose your life in the plans of the Lord. Anybody here this morning that you feel like you...